Uh, hello everybody welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations so we are discussing about the size enlargement of the particle or solid there uh, we, we are discussing about uh, the mechanism of size enlargement and what are the different types of enlargement methods those were actually discussed in the earlier lectures so in this lecture in the module of that uh, size enlargement we'll be discussing about the equipment for size enlargement so before coming to that equipment uh, we have to again uh, uh, try to remember what is that size enlargement size enlargement uh, is basically that process by which that smaller particles can be brought into a coarser particle just by you know that the mechanism of intermolecular action by or with the help of some binding agent and it is uh, associated mainly with the pharmaceutical agricultural and food industries but also plays an important role in other industries including minerals metallurgical and ceramic industries and uh, we are also discussing about several methods of uh, size enlargement of the solid material those are granulation compaction extrusion sintering spray drying and frilling and agglomeration is also another important uh, you know that enlargement method basically that uh, the almost that synonymical with that granulation process the agglomeration is the formation of agglomerates that means granules or aggregates we can say by sticking together of a smaller particles with the help of some binding liquids and also we have shown a schematic diagram of granulation method where typical agglomeration circuit that is utilized in the processing of pharmaceuticals that involves both granulation and compression techniques here you will see that in the slides that the feed will be coming from the bean which will be passing through that blender and then it will pass through the granulator in the granulator it will be processed just by adding with that solid materials with the binding fluid and this granulator will make you that granules along with that non granules materials where the mixer will be classified or segregated by a classifier and from that classifier the granule material will be passed to a bin from where by a tabulating press the granule will be given a shape of tablet and it will be coming as a product whereas non granuled materials it will be recycled okay after milling to the feed again here so it will be a continuous process and in the granule may be at a certain flow rate of that you know powders with ingredients will be you know allowed to run and then after making that granules it will be classified and then given a particular shape of tablet or other desired products shape so this is the simple schematic granulation process by which you can get that tablet in pharmaceutical industries there also we have discussed that different mechanism of that granulation process one is wet granulation and another is called dry granulation which is broadly classified under wet granulation you will see that different steps that we are discussed in the previous lecture that mechanism of granulation process or mechanism of size enlargement there so in the case of wet granulation you see that some hydrophobic drag and uh, some excipients liquids like binding solvent by which that molecules or you know that particles will be agglomerates making agglomerates just by intermolecular action making by that excipients liquid breeze between that 
liquid and solid and it happens based on that different uh, forces acting on that you know surface of the solid material and also contact angle of that solid material with the binding liquid and uh, after that you will see that it will be allowed that excipients liquid for the stage of that weighting and nucleation where that excipients liquid will weight that powdered surface and entrained into the powdered beds at a certain rate that we have discussed that what will be the rate of that equation based on which that uh, liquid material will be entraining inside the you know powdered bed that we have given that equation and uh, what should be the rate of binder addition how that binder to be added whether it will be drop wise or not after that it will be allowed to growth and consolidate there during that growth stage you will see that the fine particles will be having a layer of that uh, excipient uh, liquid or binding liquid layers and making a breeze and then coalescence and then making a larger one particles and whenever they will form that larger particles you will see that sometimes due to that attrition they will again broken into a finer particles but those particles will be as a granule so initially at the growth stage you will see that the granules which will be formed in a bigger size then after that it will be you know broken into a smaller sizes just by attrition or by other mechanism or mixing you can say so they are uh, we are having that mainly this weighting and nucleation stage growth and consolidation stage attrition breakage stage all those stages actually how those you know stages are working or are working that we were discussing in the previous lecture so i think you have gone through that lecture and uh, you try to understand that uh, you know mechanism of that weight granulation now question here that whenever we are going to make that granule where we have to make how we have to make there should be certain equipment on which that granule will be made so here we will be having equipments for that granulation there are you will see that several different categories of that granulation equipment are there but mostly those are you know used or those are very common to use for this granulation process are like one is called tumbling granulators some will be called as mixer granulators some will be as a fluidized bed granulators centrifugal granulators spray granulators and some machine will be as a comp pressure compaction machine that may be the extrusion roll press tablet press molding press even pellet mill those are being used for this granulation process so we are having these different types of you know granulation equipment you will see that uh, mixer granulators are mostly used there you will see that some will be continuous high shear like bass high shear mixing equipment for granulation some will be paddle mixer some will be this special name uh, as you know shugi mixer and also those equipments are generally used based on that product category in that case sometimes some granules to be produced very fine some granules to be produced as a coarser so according to that the equipment to be selected for fluidized bed granulators you will see that you have to use that to produce very fine granules there are different types of bubbling fluidized bed granulators will be there according to the flow pattern of that fluidized bed one is called bubbling fluidized bed another is called spouted beds the bubbling fluidized bed they are from the bottom of that bed or a column or a you know that vessel the gas will be supplied from the bottom of its vessel as a dispersed phase of bubbles so that is why it is called that bubbling fluidized bed there will be certain flow rate which is to be maintained to get this bubbling fluidized bed and sometimes you will see that to get that circulatory mixing inside the bed for that powdered materials and getting more contact between solid and liquids inside that bed it is advised to 
get different types, different patterns of that you know fluidization. So, it is called spouted beads, there you will see that at the center line here if it is a suppose the bed and here the materials are there, solid materials along with binding liquids. If the gas is supplied from the bottom, you will see that gas will be flowing upward through the core region of this fluidized bed. It will be passing as a jet you can say and here one nozzle to be used so that through the nozzle the gas will be passing as a jet. During that flowing of jet you will see that surrounding this solid liquid material it will be making a circulating cell inside this bed ok. And this circulating cell will give you the better mixing between solid and binding liquid and making that granulation. So, this type of provisions to be made at a certain liquid flow rate but it depends on what type of distributor to be used. So, if you are having that nozzle type or sometimes it is called two year type distributor. So, this distributor will make this type of core flow rate of the gas and because of which there will be a internal circulation inside this and based on which you will get that more intense mixing and making the finer granules. So, this is called spouting flow pattern which has happened in this fluidized bed. So, these are fluidized bed granulators, another one is called centrifugal granulators, so they are centrifugal action there will be the solid materials will be rotating centrifugally and then you know that the solid materials will be coming in contact with the binding liquids which will be spread through a mechanical provision that I will show in the next slides onward. So, there it is called centrifugal granulators, then spray granulators those are basically that binding liquid will be sprayed as a drop on the surface of powdered beads and where you will see that the powdered materials will be getting that weighted with respect to time and when all the powdered spread will be weighted and it will be mixed it will be you know that sheared. So, that during that shear action that you know powdered bed will be coming in uh, granules. Pressure compaction you will see that extrusion machine that will give you that you know fillet forms or you will that small sizes of granules they are just by making or compression of that materials with the binding liquid and it will give you the specific shape of that uh, desired products. Now, you will see that those are different uh, type of equipment for that granulation you will see that uh, they will have some you know special applications and also there will be certain range of you know capacity and uh, what are the granule density that will be forming based on that equipment category and also what will be the size. You will see that if you use the tumbling or disc drum type tumbling machine or vessels or granulators you can say their product size will be 0 0.5 to 20 millimeter whereas, its density will be moderate not low very and not high. So, in that case you know it depends on what will be the throughput or capacity or flow rate of that you know excipients there and also what will be the powdered materials flow rate and what is the capacity for that. Suppose, capacity is your 0 0.5 to 800 ton per hour there you will expect that 0 0.5 to 20 millimeter product size by this trembling machine. And in this case you will see that that granules will be forming almost spherical in size. These are generally used in fertilizers, iron ore, agricultural even chemical industries. And then mixer type that granulators it may be continuous, it may be bass or maybe you know that uh, transient condition. You will see that uh, there may be high shear because their powdered materials to be you know loose from its uh, still position. So, there whatever granule size will be formed that will be 0 0.1 to 2 millimeter in range and grain density will be less than you know 200 kg per bass and uh, your capacity will be less than 50 ton per hour a small capacity of this you know machines, but it will give you the finer granule size. 
but you can handle it very gently. Main as disadvantage is that cleaning of this you know mixer is very tough. So in that case you can say though the handling is easier but cleaning is not good. Operation is easier since there is no other mechanical parts which is moving inside that you know mixer. Generally chemicals, detergent, pharmaceuticals and ceramic industries they are using this type of mixer for granulation process. And then fluidized bed this is the special type where you can get again that finer granule size within a range of 0 0.1 to 2 millimeter but here capacity will be high compared to that mixer okay and also you can get high densed granular material. Here it is also good for coating and easy to scale up it is generally used in fertilizer industries to make the detergents even pharmaceutical industries to make that you know tablets even in agricultural industries you can say that for making that pesticides herbicides in the granule forms they are using this type of fluidized bed and uh, in fertilizer industry you will see that to make the urea making that granular forms of that urea they are using this fluidized bed you know granulator. In the case of centrifugal uh, granulators its product size will be 0.3 to 3.0 and millimeter density moderate to high whereas here capacity will be equal to up to 200 kg per bash. In this case powder layering and coating applications are feasible pharmaceuticals and agricultural chemicals production they are using this type of centrifugal granulators for their final products. Then spray granulators here we will see that it will give you the more finer granules it is uh, within a range of 0 0.05 millimeter to 0 0.5 you know millimeter so it is a micron size you can say but density will be very low and in this case you will see that morphology of that spray dried material can vary widely so this is one advantage it can be used or it is feasible to use for making instant foods dyes detergents ceramics even pharmaceutical products. Another important granulator is called Preling granulators where urea and uh, ammonia nitrate production these are uh, very important. In this case that product size will be point size to 2 millimeter and the granule density is coming around you know you will see that uh, moderate and it may not be you know that uh, uh, greater than 200 kg per bash. And then uh, you will get pressure compactors there are different types of pressure compactors like the extrusion, roll press, tablet press, molding press even fillet mill. In all you know that extrusion, roll press and tablet press you will see that their product granule size will be you know greater than 0 0.5 even 1 and 10 like this respectively. Here uh, you know granule density will be high to very high and uh, but uh, capacity is very low up to 5 ton per hour only. In this case whatever products you will get you will get very fine size products and almost all the granule will be uniform in size that is why there will be a narrow size distribution of this you know product and also these are very prone to powder flow and material properties that is why we are getting that you know very high you know granule density and also size will be very small. But in this case capacity will be less because of that material characteristics and these are being used in uh, pharmaceuticals even to make the catalyst inorganic and organic chemicals preparation and plastic preforms even metal parts ceramics clays minerals and animal feeds to make all those products these machines are being used. Here uh, one picture is shown about that tumbling granulator this tumbling granulator you will see that uh, it is uh, imparted to the particles in an uh, inclined cylinder generally called drum granulators or you can say it is a called a pan sometimes it is called disc granulators. In this case solid and liquids are you know fed continuously to the granulator and there will be a tumbling action that means rotating you will see that which gives rise to the rotational movement of that you know solid particles and uh, you will see that uh, 
during that tumbling action there will be a natural classification of the contents according to that size so that is why it is advantageous parallelly that you know formation of granules and separation so here you can get that narrow size distribution of the product whereas mixer granulator you see that here as soon in the picture the motion of the particles is uh, brought about by some form of agitator that will be rotating at a low or high speed on a vertical or horizontal axis and in this case rotation uh, you know speeds may vary from uh, 50 revolutions per minute in the case of horizontal mixers generally used in fertilizer industries for fertilizer uh, granulation and its uh, rpm will be increased up to 3000 in the case of vertical shugi high shear continuous granulator which is generally used for making detergent and agricultural chemicals and for vertical axis mixer you will see that is used by that pharmaceutical industry in that case impeller speeds the main important point here so impeller speeds to be varied from 500 to 1500 rpm for mixer less than 30 centimeter in diameter if the mixer is less than 30 centimeter in diameter then only this rotational speed will be considered 500 to 1500 rpm whereas if your mixer size will be larger than 1 meter in diameter in that case you have to control that rpm or you can say that rotational speed should be within a range of 50 to 200 rpm so this you have to remember and the in general you can say that the agitator speed decreases as the mixer scale increases in order to maintain either you know constant maximum velocity at the blade tip of that mixer or constant mixing pattern inside the mixer okay and also that constant mixer patterns to be depending on that you know fraud number that to be controlled as per design then fluidized bed granulator he has shown in the picture from the bottom the air or some other gas which will be non reacting with the binding liquids will be supplied through a distributor where that it will be distributed as a dispersed phase of bubbles or through a rotometer as a jet also you can say which will be broken into a finer uh, jet so in that case it will be allowed that solid and uh, fluid materials inside that fluidized bed as a circulatory motion and there will be internal circulation of that solid and uh, binding liquid and there will be intense mixing and based on which that uh, granulators will be uh, acting as a fluidized bed you can say here and make the uh, granules the advantage over others include that good heat and mass transfer will be having here because of that intense mixing and also there will be mechanical simplicity ability to combine the drying stage with the granulation stage and ability to produce small granules from powder pits in this case that liquid binders and uh, weighting agents are sprayed in the fluidized bed from the uh, some location from that periphery either from top or from that you know bottom side of that you know fluidized bed from the you know nozzle which will be giving that atomized form of that binding liquid okay that will be above or within that you know bed so particles are set in motion by that fluidizing air this is the main mechanism based on which that granules will be formed so here see that how that you know uh, liquid binder will be supplied from that top you will see that there are different uh, way that will be supplied and it will be sprayed and over that solid material or you know can the powder bed and from the bottom there will be fluidizing air which will be you know fluidizing here and uh, this is your basically what is that a spouting bed here from that you know co regions the jet will be over and that you know particles will be again going downward and it will be you know making a circulation over here and then getting the solid materials with that binding materials mixed and then uh, continuously with respect to time whenever that granules will be formed it will be taken out from that you know fluidized bed and uh, whereas if fine you know particles which is coming out from that air it will be you know separated again by that you know cyclone separator and then particles again can be reused here in the 
you know fluidized bed. So, here see that how that solid materials will be getting that circulation inside that bed here. So, this is the main mechanism by which you can get that you know fluidized uh, bed granulators and based on which that you can get the granules. So, uh, here the, the different uh, stage or different you know mechanism or pattern by which you can get that efficiency of that you know fluidized bed granulator for making that granules. So, it depends on flow pattern ok, flow rate, particle characteristics, even you know that binding a liquid concentration as well as you can say that the distributor of this fluidized bed through which that gas will be supplied to make that you know flow pattern inside the bed. Then centrifugal granulators you will see that in the picture here, you will see that hot air is blown upward, hot air is blown upward ok between turntable and granulation area. This is turntable here shown and this is the granulated area and you will see that the air here which will be coming to that turntable, it will be spraying or it will be spread inside that you know granulator which will cause that course to roll the binder solution then is sprayed on the rolling course through the pump and spray gun. So, here you will see that the air will cause the course to roll here. The binder solution is sprayed here this is the mechanism the spraying mechanism on the rolling course here this is the rolling course through the pump that you know binder liquid will be supplied and spray gun to be used to you know spray here and then rolling core will be spraying in this way. So, during that you know rolling of that you know materials just by spraying that you know or spreading that you know binding liquid by that circulating motion of that air you will see that the solid materials will come into contact with that spraying liquid and whenever it will come then of course, it will form a coat and after that you will see that there will be a drying operation, that drying operation will be happened simultaneously here and if powder coating is required the fixed volume of powder is to be spread at a certain time ok, whenever that continuously moving that gas inside the granulator and you will see that the solution whenever come in contact with that solid material during that movement the solution will coat the powder on the course and it will produce the pellet and get coating and drying simultaneously. Now, this type of granulator will be very promising due to its advantage of simple and compact structure. Controlling of this equipment is very easy energy consumption is low and also you will see that fine slag particles and desired glassy phase also will be forming during that granulation process which may be used again for that you know recirculating granulator. Now, uh, there are different types of you know this type of granulators can be used in industry for making these granules to you know get that enlarged size of particles. Now, main point here that to make these granulators you need that excipients that means binding liquids, some additives, some other you know you know chemicals which will give you some you know coating, some uh, you know stabilizers which will stabilize that granulator, pH modifiers, even you will see that some colors that you have to give. So, what are those you know that excipients? So, we can classify that excipients in the bulking agents, functional additives and others like this. Bulking agents or as fillers we can say that will start to form the core or structure of a dose form. Bulking agents generally are inert materials that are relatively inexpensive and also you will see that functional additives which include the binders, disintegrants, lubricants, colorants, even stabilizing some agents that will be used and the choice of that excipients depends on the number of factors like drug, what type of drug that will be used, the process involved, 
the formulators and the cost of excipient these are the factors and what are those bulking agents you can see that very common filler or bulking agents are sugar lactose dicalcium phosphate starch microcrystalline cellulose etc functional additives very common functional additives are binders disintegrants lubricants stabilizing agents and colorants okay now in this case question is that uh, what is the difference between that functional additives and bulking agents you will see that functional additives will uh, react with that you know materials whereas bulking agents will not react to that non solid materials binders there are different types of binders are generally used some will be polymers some will be you know that sugars sugars may be sucrose glucose and sorbitol whereas polymers some will be natural some will be semi synthetic material as a polymers uh, semi synthetic polymers some will be synthetic polymers some natural you will see sometimes it is called biopolymers also like acacia alizinic acid sodium alizinate even kea gum these are biomaterials even you will see that some other seed gum you will see gelan gum and their combination also different types of gums they are used as a natural polymers we can say semi synthetic polymers like ethyl cellulose sodium carboxymethyl cellulose methyl cellulose even uh, hydroxy propyl cellulose etc even hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose also used as a sem semi synthetic you know polymers which is used as binders and then synthetic like polyvinyl pyrrolidone and polyethylene glycol those are being used as a binders okay and what is the role of that binders so the binders will provide the cohesiveness which is essential for the bonding of the solid particles under the compaction to form tablet and also it will promote the size enlargement to produce granules and thus improve the flowability of that you know blend also you see that these binders are often used as a filers and uh, impart compressibility of the powder blend also it is used to aid in durability and enhance the elegance of the you know granules sometimes the disintegrants also being used for this you know granulation process to increase the hydrostatic pressure in the formulation when it comes in contact with the water so there you have to increase sometimes that hydrostatic pressure so it is responsible for ensuring the break up of the tablet matrix upon ingestion so what is that uh, disintegrants like some will be you know that cross uh, carmelose sodium some will be you know sodium stars glycolate even uh, some will be you know low substituted uh, you know hydroxy propyl cellulose even some will be called as uh, cross po vidon uh, like this these are the different types of disintegrants to be used for the granulation process and sometimes to increase the flowability by reducing the friction between the tablet and the dye materials you will see that sometimes you need to reduce that friction so for that you have to use some lubricants what are those sometimes stars talc powder hydrogenated vegetable oil stearic acid wax even it is called calcium or stearate are being used as a lubricants but mostly used as a magnesium stearate in industry as a lubricant so i think uh, you have uh, learned something about that what are the different types of equipments are generally used in industry for making granules and uh, also what are the different uh, types of binding liquids are being used for that granulation process along with other lubricants even other uh, disintegrants all those things so please go through the slides again to know better and you can follow other books uh, uh which is given uh, for your reference i think you will be able to gain more uh, understanding on this uh, subject so this is basically that uh, uh, undergraduate level so these are the 
portion that will be covered so that is why i think this much is enough for you and in the next lecture we'll try to uh, follow uh, the next module that will be you know flow past immersed bodies in the next lecture we will try to understand what is the flow phenomena whenever it will be flowing over the cylinder or spherical particle and uh, successively we will also discuss more about flow past of the you know solid materials so thank you have a nice day